The words cookie dough and diet have never been in the same sentence. Unless it was, you can't eat cookie dough on a diet. Well today, in the anabolic laboratory, we are cooking up, not so much cooking, but making edible cookie dough that we are going to use in the next video for a cookie dough protein ice cream. After 20 cookie dough recipes, using multiple artificial sweeteners to see what tastes best, and three taste testers other than myself, we finally came to the conclusion that this anabolic cookie dough was the best. I can without a shadow of a doubt tell you right here and right now that this will be the best high protein, low calorie cookie dough on YouTube after you make it. Guaranteed. We're not using chickpeas. This is not a dairy-free recipe. This is going to be 100% real cookie dough, but infused with protein, much lower calorie than the real thing, but even better than any of the store-bought recipes. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Nick, and I review other people's recipes or make my own anabolic recipes, which I'm doing here today. If you're into that kind of thing, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if there's someone you know that loves cookie dough after you try this for yourself, please share it. It would mean the world to me. I think everyone should try this and everyone should be able to eat cookie dough while on a diet and still lose weight, all the while getting the chance to still eat the things that they absolutely love. No more talking, it's recipe time. Let's get into it. We're gonna start with our dry ingredients first. Most important thing is we have a scale for this. This one is on point. I've had other YouTubers buy it. I've had other people that watch the channel that make the recipes buy it. Everyone loves it. It's down to the point one. Not many scales do that. Well worth the money. I think it's like $15, $20 tops. And I've had it for like six months, use it every day, multiple times a day, sometimes for hours. And I've only had to replace the battery one time. Then we are going to start with flour. Yes, regular white flour. Now, if you actually look gram for gram, almond flour, coconut flour, any of those flours, those are nuts. An ounce of nuts is like 160, 170 calories. In 30 grams, this is about 110 calories. So we're saving 60 calories by using regular flour. I guess the only thing I should really say is, Greg Doucette uses regular ass bread to make his French toast. I don't care what you say, it's as good as rice, as healthy as rice, I don't care what you say. It's the same concept. Calories are calories. If you're in a calorie deficit, you will lose weight. We're gonna use regular flour because I tried coconut flour, almond flour, mixing the two. It doesn't taste the same. And I was getting like porridge or it'd be like a really sticky ball. It really wasn't good. So regular flour it is. Now we're gonna do 90 grams. The second critical piece of information here is the rawness of the flour. Yes, flour is raw. Yes, let's be safe and heat it up. I can do that here today for you. That's no problem. However, my whole life, I ate from the bowl before the cake batter or the muffins or whatever was made, always ate it with the raw egg. Every time I made one of these recipes, I ate it with the raw flour. I also heated it up, tried the recipe, the same exact ingredients, just with it heated. It didn't change the taste at all. So to me, I would say ask your doctor, but I'll leave it up to you. Once again, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna heat it up in the microwave. You can do the oven at 350 degrees and put it like on a sheet, heat it up for five minutes, it'll be good. Or you heat this up for 30 seconds at, the at a time in the microwave, until it reaches 150 degrees. To do that, you will need a food thermometer as well. This cost me $12 on Amazon. I just bought this one. My other one needed a new battery and it cost like $6 for a new battery. So why wouldn't I just buy a new one for six more dollars? Doesn't make sense, right? Either way, I'm gonna heat it up for 30 seconds at a time and we'll make sure it's 150 degrees. Good to go, okay. Now I need to let it cool down. Again, I'm gonna leave this up to you. Whatever you wanna do, whatever you see fit. We are cooled down. Now we're going to add our protein. I'm going to tell you I would absolutely 100% 
recommend using the bodybuilding whey protein. All the links for all this stuff is in my description. Bodybuilding protein is not only always on sale, like always on sale, it's like $8 a pound. If you want, go and compare that to any of your favorite YouTubers recommendations on the protein powder. See how much it is per pound. $8 per pound and it is absolutely delicious. And I cannot guarantee that you will get the exact same flavor if you don't use a good vanilla protein. I've had two good vanilla proteins in about seven or eight attempts of trying a vanilla protein. This is one of them. If you have a great tasting vanilla protein, go ahead and use it. It'll still work, but I just don't want to guarantee you if you go to Sam's Club, I've tried that vanilla protein before at Sam's Club, it's not good. So I would invest in a good vanilla protein if you don't already have one. This is a great brand, highly recommend it. Two scoops or 66 grams. So if your two scoops on your vanilla protein is 60 grams, do 60 grams. Just use the measurement per scoop on your bottle of protein. The last dry ingredient we need is salt. Salt brings out the flavor in everything. I originally wasn't using salt for my anabolic milkshakes. Iron Musket told me to use salt in one of his recipes. I tried it, now I put it in all of my recipes, whether it is an ice cream or it's a pizza, doesn't matter. Gram and a half in this, is perfect. And this is another reason I would say to get this kind of scale. If you don't wanna get this one, that's okay, but try to get a 0.1 scale if you don't have one already. Now we don't want clumping. So we're gonna mix this all together with a fork or a whisk, whatever you prefer. But I know everyone has a fork. And it really only takes like 30 seconds. Just make sure it's well combined. Wet ingredients. I made a last second attempt at changing the recipe to make it better and it worked. So we're gonna add two eggs. We can go through this whole spiel again, but this is gonna be up to you. Every time that I cooked it, didn't pasteurize my eggs. Now you can go to Whole Foods, there's a couple different places, Target has some pasteurized eggs, and you can get a dozen. A dozen costs like eight or nine dollars. Not to say it's gonna break the bank because we're only using two of them, so you could make six recipes with that, but if you're feeling risque, you can add two eggs. 70 cent, a dozen eggs. Up to you. I'm not putting words in your mouth. Do whatever you want. And these are large eggs. I'm literally about to turn 30. I've probably eaten raw cookie dough 500 times. I'm 500 for 500. Please don't let this be the first time. But pretty damn good odds so far. Now we're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. This thing, before I started making not only the cookie dough protein ice cream, which is coming out in a few days, and this cookie dough itself was full, completely full. And if you don't know, you only really use a teaspoon at the most at a time for a recipe. I don't know how many teaspoons is in this thing, but I would probably say a hundred, and I have probably three teaspoons left. So we have been whipping up so many bricks in this kitchen of both cream and cookie dough, and you are going to absolutely love both recipes. I cannot wait for you to try both. One teaspoon is 4.2 grams. This is light butter with canola oil. It is half the calories. It is a little watery if you let it sit for a while. So I'm gonna mix this up, but it tastes exactly like real butter. It mixes in exactly like real butter, and it works perfectly. I tried a bunch of butter substitutes, didn't work. I tried this and it made a world of difference because at first I was trying the, you know, the coconut flour, the almond flour, the fake butter. This is real butter. It's just filled with a little bit more water. Worth the calories for the flavor and what you get in the final product. I promise you. So we're doing three tablespoons here or 42 grams. For our sugar substitute or our artificial sweetener, we are using Swerve. Swerve is made from urethritol, urethritol, urethritol. Not exactly sure how to say it, but learned about these in school. I just did a refresher on urethritol to make sure I had my facts straight. And I wouldn't recommend something to you if I thought it might be harmful for you in the future. Yeah, you might look better now, but if you end up getting cancer, is it really worth it? Mm, I don't know, that's up to you. However, luckily, 
for both you and I, it has no link to cancer. It has no link to future death in any way. And out of all the other artificial sweeteners, this one doesn't really have any effect on your bowels, AKA making you gassy, making you have diarrhea, making you, you know, go to the bathroom more, which every other artificial sweetener that I looked up does. And erythritol is the only artificial sweetener with an ADI that is not specified by the FDA. ADI is acceptable daily intake and not specified means they don't see it harmful in any amount that you take. And today for this whole recipe, we are only using 48 grams, which gives us six servings. And if you guys are interested in seeing like a full, like scientific, I can go in depth about urethritol and make like a 10 or 15 minute video on it and you wanna know more details, just let me know in the comment section. But we're going with 24 grams of Swerve. This is the brown sugar. This is the only brown sugar that I could find with urethritol in it that was zero calories. And on top of it, urethritol is the only sweetener that per 100 grams doesn't have any calories in it. Literally zero in 100 grams. All I gotta say to that is, hell yeah. All right, so 24.4, but we know what we can do with our granular swerve. We can do 23.6. They have these at Juul, the swerve, or I also linked them in, my, in the description. You can get them on Amazon where you can get like a three pack of this one, the confectioner sugar, which you can make my birthday cake French toast with, which is absolutely amazing. And the brown sugar. So you get all three in one pack and I will be using these going forward because there's no calories in them. They taste great in my opinion and they're fairly cheap. Like if you get both of these, you're going to be able to make... Mm like 13 recipes. <laughs> so you spend the $16, you get to make 30 cookie doughs. No brainer. And trust me, I tried other sugar replacements. These not only have calories in them, but they didn't taste as good when I did my initial recipes. So let's get the swerve. It's gonna be the best. And all this is is nine ingredients. And once you have those nine ingredients, you're going to be able to make a boatload of cookie dough, amongst other things that are coming up very soon in the future. So we mixed our flour up, now we need to mix our wet ingredients up. They're not going to get fully combined and mixed, but just do it as best you can. I do it for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and then we start combining our wet and dry ingredients. Wet ingredients are mixed, now we're gonna put in the dry ingredients in parts which means I do it in four parts. I put in a quarter of the recipe if possible. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but boom, that looks good. Let's start mixing it in. Once the flour disappears, that's when I add in my next part. After your first part, it's still gonna look thin. Not to worry, it will get thick with three C's guaranteed. Just give it some time. All right, first part's mixed in. We'll get that second part in. And this is what we're looking like after the first part. So we're a little bit thick, but not really. It's still pretty much as thin as it was once you mix the eggs and everything together. All right, so the flour is mixed into this one. It's really starting to get a lot thicker here. And after this third part, your arm's probably gonna start hurting from the amount of mixing you're doing. Hurting in a good way though. That last one probably took me about two minutes. This one's probably gonna take me about two minutes as well, maybe two and a half minutes. And then the last one takes me like five or six minutes to do. But again, you get six servings of this. So it's well worth the time and the effort, especially for being able to eat cookie dough. Who thought you can literally eat legit cookie dough that's better than at the store and fit it into your calories and lose weight, even if you binge on it. I'll tell you those stats later though. For now, Let's get this all whisked, 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 whisked in. Third part is mixed in. We have our fourth part. This is where I switch over to the spatula because I could scrape the sides a lot better and get everything really mixed in because we don't want it clumpy. The more you mix it, the less clumpiness, the more all the flavors mix in with each other when it's resting in the fridge. So just trust me, get a spatula. Oh, and this is how we're looking now. 
Really starting to stick together after the third one there. All right, so now when you're mixing it in, this is what it's kind of looking like. It's all clumping together, really turning into that cookie dough. This is our final part, baby. So excited, let's go. Every recipe I put a lot of work in, but I put like my heart and soul into this recipe because I wanted it to be perfect. And I didn't want some nutty butter, whatever flavor. Like I wanted the real thing for you guys to be able to even binge on it and still have it be okay where you're not gaining a bunch of weight if you eat the whole damn tub. We're almost done here and now look at it. This is what you're looking for. All right, we do still have a little bit of mixing to go, but now we can add our chocolate chips and get the minis. The thought process behind the minis is that you want as much chocolate in every single bite. Just like my ice creams, I try to do the same thing where I make sure that all of the ingredients are in every bite if possible, if not every other bite. Using the minis, you're going to get probably double the coverage, if not triple the coverage of a regular chocolate chip. Well worth it, same price, right next to the regular ones. Definitely recommend getting the minis. So you could even see in here that there's a good amount of chocolate chips, especially once you mix it in. You can add more chocolate chips if you want to. It won't really add that much calories. If you put like an extra serving, you're only adding 10 or 12 calories and it's gonna be super chocolate chippy. But that's up to you, whatever you wanna do. Like this is just so pleasing to do. You're going to love it. We are ready to pour into our container. Now, if you want to measure it out, it should weigh, I've gotten anything from like 355 to about 365, but mostly like 358, 361, 359. So I'm going to just say that we get 360 grams of cookie dough, which divided by six servings is 60 grams a serving, which is about double what you get at the store with the store-bought brands. It hasn't even had time to set yet and it tastes so damn good. You can eat this right away if you want, it's up to you. But I do recommend about two hours in the fridge minimum. And I think the flavors really intensify the most after about 24 hours, especially the first time. I don't blame you whatsoever for digging in. I've eaten so much cookie dough in the last two months. Still not sick of it. All right, here's one that's already been sitting in the fridge for about a day. It does thicken. It doesn't thicken to the point of like cookie dough at the store. However, that ends up really working out for us. And at the end of the day, if you make any of these anabolic milkshakes, because it sits a lot better in the anabolic milkshake, because as you guys know, it's not as thick, it's still thick, but it's not as thick as ice cream. So if they're super chunky and hard and whatever, they sink to the bottom. Isn't that the worst when you get something and everything's at the bottom? You want it throughout, like I said, in every bite. So what's good about this is it's a little bit dense, but not too dense, and it sits right in the ice cream wherever you swirl it into. And I've also learned I've gotten the texture, like the cookie dough at the store, and I've learned that texture doesn't equal flavor. If I've ever wanted to Remington Helm, this is the time. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. All right, let's do some macro comparisons here. In the store bought, there's 130 calories and 28 grams. In each serving, there is six grams of fat, 18 carbs, one gram of protein. In mine, for the same 28 gram serving, there is 76 calories, 3.1 fat, so almost half the fat, 11.2 carbs, but you actually subtract the carbs from the swerve, so it ends up being 7.5 net carbs and 5.8 grams of protein. And you're like, wait, Nick, you made me watch this long drawn out video for six damn grams of protein. Hold on. Give me one second. You guys know how easy it is to eat cookie dough. You can easily eat four five, six cookies of cookie dough. No problem. So I wanted to do a comparison when you ate four pieces of cookie dough from the store, which is 112 grams. You're getting 24 fat, 72 carb, four protein. And four cookies cost you 520 of your calories for the day. 
okay? For that same 520 calorie serving, instead of 112 grams or four cookies, you're getting 190 grams or 6.8 cookies. You almost get identical fat, but that's okay. It's just eggs. Egg yolks are good for you. Egg whites are good for you. No big deal. A little bit in the chocolate. A little bit of chocolate's still good for you. No big deal. 76 carbs, 25 of which are from the sorter. So really it's 51 grams of carbs and 39.4 grams of protein. So if you essentially have a 500 calorie serving, you're getting almost 40 grams of protein. You'd be happy in a meal if you ate a sandwich or whatever, French toast, and you got 40 or 50 grams of protein. You could legitimately binge on this. 520 calories is a little over three servings. And when you binge on it, it would essentially be a meal. Because hear me out, there's flavor fatigue. It doesn't matter what you do. You get through half of the sheet of the real cookie dough from the store. You're like, all right, that, this is really good still, but there's so much sugar, like I gotta, I gotta cut it off. Same thing here. What I did was bring one of the jars back to my couch fully loaded after 24 hours, waited, hungry, ready to eat, wanted to see how much cookie dough I could have before I was like, nope, no more, don't want any more. I got a little bit more than halfway through. A little bit more than halfway through is about that 520 calorie mark. It's a no brainer. Honestly, if I haven't convinced you yet to go make this cookie dough, I'm never going to, but whether or not you do make this cookie dough, give that video a like so more people could see it. Share it on your Instagram or your Facebook or wherever you can share it so people see that they can eat cookie dough while on a diet. And subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, no matter how much you don't like my hair. But until next time, I will see you in that next one. Do see.